Hey, hey. So they told me to go and stand on this white cross here. So this is the best place to talk. Um, about four years ago, <laughs> um, Soichiro, who was my contact person within the Yakuza, laid down the ground rules. And uh, we were driving in his car at 3.30 in the morning on our way from Tokyo to Niigata, to the prison up north in Japan, where um, two members of the uh, family were going to be released that day. And he was talking to me and said, um, well, he didn't really directly lay down the ground rules. It was kind of in a turnaround way. He said, um, he started talking about the art of yubitsume, means, which would mean finger shortening. <laughs> so I got started getting pretty nervous right there and then. Um, so he said, uh, one cuts off um, a part of his own little finger himself and presents it to the person he wants to make a statement to. And usually it's an apology. And he added, um, if you do something wrong, you will have to apologize. <laughs> so I went back and stood on this little cross. I didn't move anymore. Um, so I got really nervous right there. And uh, his boss was actually also in the car in the back seat. And he, um, well, just looked and, and uh, stood there uh, looking at the scene. And I was turning around to start taking pictures because it was the first time I was with him. And um, I was actually so nervous that I, you know, literally could not pick up my camera because this guy was looking at me. He was looking at me really fiercely. <laughs> I, there was no way to communicate. I didn't speak Japanese. He didn't speak English. Um, and Soichiro, who's driving the car, was my contact, is signaling me, OK, picture, OK, OK. So I'm thinking, OK, it's good. I'll, I'll take a picture. But this guy, it's uh, the middle guy here, who is the actual godfather of the family. He uh, <laughs> still looking at me like that. And I don't even have the chance to bring my camera up uh, to my eye, and I, I just, you know, accidentally, out of nervousness, press the shutter release button even before I can compose the picture. And that was what what's, was what to become the most important picture for me, for that project. And that's what marked actually the uh, first day of me photographing the Yakuza. So I did that for two years, walking on eggshells, being really careful, and uh, along the way, my friends they actually uh, kept on asking me, and people who I would talk to kept on asking me, like, how the hell did you get in? How did you do this? Oh, this picture is going to come up of the guy in the back seat of the car. Um, I don't want to link too much to the presentation, but here we go. I mean, uh, you could say that that guy makes you nervous. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really look like he likes to be photographed. Um, but people kept asking me, why, uh, how did you get in? How did you... How were you able to uh, publish a book? How were you able to uh, keep funding yourself? How were you able to design your book? How were you uh, able to um, keep the interest of the press? How were you able to keep the interest of the Yakuza? And, and all these questions came to me and I was thinking like, they must be really good questions because I can't answer them. I have no idea. I mean, I was just doing this. So there was no rhythm, there was no there was no plan to it, there was nothing behind the scenes that, 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 was, uh, that was like masterminded or anything. It was just my brother and I who, who, were, who thought it was cool to try this. And basically, that was, that, was all, that was all we thought, that was honestly all we thought at that time. So that was a decision to do the project. But um, because all my friends started asking me, but you know, why? I mean, there must be a key to this. I mean, you must be able to replicate this for future projects. I mean, you should know what you did so you can at least pass it on to other people and talk about it and, and say, look, this is what we did. And, well, this guy apologized. <laughs> Twice. I mean, <laughs> so, um, and the really funny thing, oh, shit, the picture's gone. Oh, uh, it's okay, no worries. Um, so I started thinking actually about what we were doing and I started noticing, looking back, um, that 
I got lucky pretty often. And I used to think during the project that, that I actually felt, well, wow, this is a lucky break. Um, and, and it actually, how would you say, it was just a feeling of serendipity of things uh, falling into place at a certain point. For example, um, there was this time when they invited me in um, into a bathhouse and usually uh, the Yakuza hold meeting in bathhouses. Why do they hold meeting in bathhouses? They want to see each other's tattoos. I mean, of course. They're, they've got these, these huge tattoos. You know, the, the back is filled with, uh, with this incredible artwork. And obviously, the real reason why they do it in bathhouses is because they're a bit private. And um, because they can actually see, because you're naked in a bathhouse, you can be sure that the other one does not have a concealed weapon. So they invite me in to photograph. Um, you can imagine that for a photographer, this is a weird situation. So I'm stripping down. I'm completely naked. I've got this little white towel in one hand, and I've got my camera in the other hand. And I'm very conscious of my own body. <laughs> and so I'm walking in there, and I see all these big guys with big tattoos, relaxing, having a shower, doing whatever. Uh, things are done in a, in a bathhouse, and I'm taking photographs. And so I like the low viewpoint. <laughs> and, well, yeah, it was pretty weird. I mean, you, you know, you kind of... You don't want to crouch down too much if you don't have any clothes on. Don't Just don't do it. I mean, trust me. Uh, because I'm doing this, and people are starting laughing behind me. <laughs> and I, first of all, at first, at, at first I don't actually know if, uh, if it's about me, but people are starting to giggle behind me. M uh, one person starts laughing, another person starts laughing, and then I'm thinking like, okay, this is about me. Someone's, I'm, I must be doing something inappropriate or something, or mildly inappropriate. Obviously not really inappropriate, because otherwise I would be cutting off my finger. Um, but, um, so... I turn around and I see that they're actually indeed talking about me. And I think like, what, you know, what's going on? Sorry, I want to interrupt. This is actually good. This is the Godfather. And he's wearing a t-shirt of Killer Bee. He has no idea. I mean, <laughs> okay, this is the bathhouse scene. Um, so I'm photographing these people. They're laughing at me. And so the Godfather, who's the middle guy here, he uh, stands up, he comes to me. Remember, you're both naked. And he puts his hand on my shoulder. And he points at the little tattoo of a sun which I had in the middle of my back. And he says, and he smiles, and he says, nice baby tattoo. <laughs> and, you know, and, and, he, and he laughs, and he goes away, and everyone's laughing. And I'm thinking, like, oh, God, oh, geez, come on. <laughs> but it's these kind of things that, you know, it makes you feel lucky looking back at that. Um, I mean, I didn't feel lucky at the moment, at that moment. But afterwards, thinking back, it actually really helped me to build up a relationship with them. And um, when I look back upon the project, and you know, referring back to the question, like, how the hell did you pull this off? Uh, I noticed that there were very many, or really a lot of um, lucky moments like this. And they're not directly related to photography. And the, that's actually the weird thing, because you could say, I mean, to prepare for a project, clean your camera very well. Bring spare batteries, blah, 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 blah. That's all, I mean, beside the point, it's not, it's not relevant, actually. <laughs> this guy apologized as well. Yes, well, also twice. <laughs> Talk to the hand. <laughs> so that's <laughs> no, he actually, he actually said that. <laughs> so um, I'm, I not I'm noticing all these little connections to my life. Instead of being prepared as a photographer uh, in a photographic way, like you would think you would want to prepare, like, you know, pack your gear in your bag, you know, I noticed that my life was my preparation in some way. So things that I did maybe long before not related to photography, like getting this little tattoo on my back, for example, um, like as a kid uh, playing golf, um, 
and hating it after two weeks, obviously, um, and then loving it again uh, in your 20s and then hating it again. I mean, love is, uh, love. <laughs> um, uh, golf is a very, very complex sport. I mean, emotionally, you love it, you hate it, uh, you cannot win at golf. Um, but for example, golf was another one of those little things connected to my life. Um, during the negotiations, which lasted about 10 months, so that would mean I would be flying to Japan, staying there, coming back for 10 months before I actually knew um, if I could photograph them. Um, the, one of the first things that Soichiro did was, besides getting naked and showing, <laughs> showing me his tattoo, um, was uh, Anton, let's go and play a round of golf. And, um, you know, again, a moment like that that I'm thinking like, wow, I must be the luckiest guy in, in the world. I mean, I know how to play golf. I mean, not everyone knows how to play golf. That, oh, this is really good. So I could hold my own at the golf game. But the reason why he actually did that and why people in Japan and Yakuza people um, play golf is because you can gauge your adversary very well. Um, through body language, through um, how you deal with adversities during the golf game, blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's a whole lot of... Uh, there are many theories about golf and business, but it's actually true. So they, uh, he gauged me, and luckily, because I can play golf, I could gauge him. So we knew, okay, this is gonna be, this is gonna be fine. And then there were, you know, a million other moments that actually all related to how would you say, the being lucky part. And I'm thinking of another one would be, for example, as I studied in, in, in uh, Leuven, I was born here, a mile, only a mile away from here. So this is really local for me. Um, and, but I studied in the University of Louvain. I studied uh, political philosophy. And when I uh, obtained my master's degree, I went to work as a graphic designer and a printer. So it has nothing to do with anything. I mean, a political philosopher has no business being a graphic designer, but I did it anyway. And um, after that, I moved on to other jobs, blah, blah, blah. Eventually, I started my own company, uh, this and that. But the fact that I chose for a graphic design at that point made it possible for me to uh, take them along, which is actually a very important point in a long-term project, to take them along with me on the journey that I am making. So they're the subject, but I want them to understand the story that I want to tell. And that's, of course, very hard because they are actually looking at themselves and they need to be able to step out of it and see the story, what is being told about them. That was also a very intimate moment, um, which was rather a serious moment. Um, but um, I could actually... Uh, I started making book dummies, and I took book dummies along always. Sorry, every time, uh, every couple of weeks, I would uh, um, show them pictures that I had made for the previous weeks. I would tell them, you have the veto right to any image you want. You can always tell me if you don't want an image, uh, you can veto it. You can say, look, I don't want to use it, or I don't want you to use it. But you have to know that at the same time, I have a veto right as well. So you cannot force images upon me, and I cannot force a story about you upon you as well. So they would know the fact that I would open myself up that way to them um, was tremendously trust-building and allowed me to go in deeper and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I would take book dummies along and make them follow my story. So at the, in the beginning, it would be literally a book with white pages and just two pictures stuck on. Obviously, the first picture was the one with a, with a face cut off and the, uh, and the blue uh, street. Uh, and then afterwards, the tattoo pictures. I mean, uh, everything followed uh, uh, in the way that uh, it happened. And that made them connect to my story uh, in a way that I would know that... Because it was very important here not to... Um, how would you say, try to do your own story if they would want to hear it or not. You have to get them to accept that you are making your story. Not to accept just the images, but that you are a person, an artist who wants to tell something. And you can do this by taking them along 
in your journey and not hiding away. I mean, this is uh, from one photographer to another. The most, most photographers would take pictures, go away, make the pictures, publish them. But what I did was I went back to them and showed them the pictures and showed it growing and growing and growing. And that's how I actually got to be able to... Uh oh, this is also a nice story, this one. Um, Jesus, so many stories. Okay, oh, I've only got three minutes left. Okay, uh, my point being... <laughs> um, well, this is the very first time I met Soichu also. Uh, uh, this was even before we actually had the, uh, the approval. He would say, hey, you want to see my tattoo? And imagine you're sitting in a chair in front of him, and he stands in front of you and <laughs> uh, starts stripping down and then turn around. I mean, my brother literally had to tap on my shoulder and say, hey, hey, Anton, you have to take a picture, because I was just like staring, uh, like this is... Jesus, um, it's go. It's really a different, uh, different set of uh, norms here in Japan as as, uh, as opposed to Europe. Um, but yeah, there was. So what I actually wanted to say w was that there is um, a tremendous amount of, or it would seem that there is a tremendous amount of luck involved. But actually, that luck is just um, your whole life coming into play. So you've got your life, uh, your life as your assets and you use that asset to go and do your project. You don't worry about the practical things like how to take a picture. I mean, Jesus, we, huh? you know, pushing a button. I mean, nowadays everyone can take a picture with, with an iPhone. Um, so you worry about becoming the person you are and that will help you and that will like Paulo Coelho would say, make the stars align so that you can complete your project. And that's kind of the core of what I wanted to talk about. So that was my idea. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.